In today's video, we are going to talk about Ubuntu versus Manjaro. Well, first of all, I'll start with Ubuntu. I'm using Ubuntu 22.04 LTS version. Well, first of all, let's start with the user interface. Well, this is how Ubuntu looks like and on the top right corner, we have some of the utilities and power option. And then in the middle of the screen, we have our time and date and we'll get all the notifications in here as well. On the left side of our screen, we have some of the applications that are docked by default into our Ubuntu. And then we have a button that says activities. If you just click on it, it will show you all the activities that are open into your Ubuntu at the moment. If I just click on it, this is how it's going to look like. This was the brief introduction about the interface. Now I'll talk about the desktop environment. Well, Ubuntu comes with Genome desktop environment by default. Let me go to the settings of my system. So I'll just go to my display settings or you can go to any other settings. From there, I'll go to about section of my Ubuntu. And in here, as you can see, it is using Genome version 42.0 by default. Well, there are some other flavors of desktop environments available that you can choose. For example, we have Kubuntu, Lubuntu, we have Xubuntu. They come with different desktop environments. But all of those Linux distributions are based on Ubuntu. So you will have everything that you are going to have in this Linux distribution. Same in those Linux distributions as well. So that was all about the desktop environment. Now I'll talk about the package management or how you can install different things into your Ubuntu. Well, Ubuntu uses APT for their package management. For example, in case if you want to install something, you have to use APT as your command. For example, let's download and install VLC. So I'll just write here sudo apt install VLC and you just need to hit enter and it will download and install the VLC media player into your Ubuntu. So basically apt is a package manager in our Ubuntu. I'll just get out of it and now let's talk about the default application in our Ubuntu. For that purpose, we have a button here that says show applications. You just need to click on it and it will show you all those applications that come by default in our Ubuntu. Well, we have LibreOffice by default for our documents. For our browser, we have Mozilla Firefox as a default web browser. And for our mail client, we have Thunderbird Mail. Other than that, we have a software center from Ubuntu that will allow you to download and install a lot of applications as per your liking. Now, let's talk about the support of Ubuntu. Well, Ubuntu is one of the most matured Linux distribution out there and it is one of the oldest one as well. Ubuntu was released in 2004 and we have two forums of Ubuntu known as Ask Ubuntu and Ubuntu Forum. And those are very huge communities. In case if you get into any problem, you can use those community to find the solutions to all of your problems. Now. Let's talk about the Ubuntu Software Center, how it looks like and what does it has to offer. Well, this is how it looks like and from here you can download a lot of applications that are available for Ubuntu. And good thing is, Steam is also supported for Ubuntu. It means if you are into gaming, you will enjoy using this Linux distribution. Other than that, we have categories of applications as well. So it will be easier for you to find out particular application for your Ubuntu. I'll just close this one. Now let's see how much resources this Linux distribution is using at the moment. For that purpose, I'll use the utility known as top, hit enter. As you can see, my Ubuntu is using around 1300 megabytes of my hardware resources at the moment. And I would say this is not an optimal usage of hardware resources. Because we see there are a lot of Linux distribution which uses around 700, 800, 900 on average hardware resources. So as we have seen the hardware resource usage, now let's talk about how much hardware resources you will be needing in order to install Ubuntu into your machine. Well, you should have at least 4 gigabytes of RAM and 20 gigabytes of hard drive space in order to install it and in order to have smoother experience by using your Ubuntu. At the end, I would talk about the release cycle. 
Well, Ubuntu follows the LTS release cycle, which means long term support. And you just need to download the latest version of Ubuntu in order to have everything latest into your Linux distribution. On the other hand, Manjaro has a different release cycle and we'll talk about that later. So that was all about the Ubuntu. And now let's move towards the Manjaro and let's see what do we have there. This is how our Manjaro looks like. Well, first of all, let's start with the user interface. Well, we have some of the applications or you can say we have some of the tools that are docked onto our desktop. For example, we have our trash file system and we have our home. And then at the bottom right corner, we have some of the utilities and we have date and time and we have our power option as well. We'll have all the notification related to our system in here as well. And then if you see, we have two small windows in here. Basically, these are workspaces that we can use for multiple purposes. Then on the bottom left corner of our screen, we have our menu button or you can say applications button. Now, if we talk about the desktop environment, Manjaro comes with three different desktop environments. You can download the XFCE, KDE or Genome desktop environment with your Manjaro. You will just need to download a single file with a different desktop environment. On the other hand, in Ubuntu, we had different flavors of Ubuntu with different desktop environment. It means we had to download a different operating system in terms of having different desktop environment. But that is not the case with Manjaro. Now let's talk about some of the default application. If I just click on applications button, well here we have all those applications that come by default. These are the categories of all those applications. If you just click on your games, it will show you all those games available. Basically, it is showing us Steam. It means Steam is supported by default for our Manjaro. So if you are a gamer, you would love to use this Linux distribution. Then we have graphics, internet, and let's see what do we have in terms of internet. Well, for our browser, we have Mozilla Firefox by default, and then we have Thunderbird as a mail client, just like Ubuntu. For our multimedia, we have some of the applications like we have VLC media player as a default one. Then in terms of office, we do not have LibreOffice. We have only office available in here. So these were some of the default application that we get by default in Manjaro. And now let's talk about the software center of Manjaro and how does it look like. So if I just search here software, here we have add remove software. If you just click on this one, so this is how it looks like. So from here, you can browse any software that is available and that you can use into your Manjaro. And here we have categories of all the applications. And then if you go back, we have groups and we have repositories as well. You can sort your application into your software center. And then we have some more options in here. I'll just get out of it. And now I'll talk about the package manager. Well, as we have seen that in Ubuntu, we have apt but if we talk about manjaro in manjaro we have pacman as a package manager so in case if you want to download and install something we have to use pacman for example if i write here sudo pacman install wine so here you can see the pacman is a package manager not apt because manjaro is not based on ubuntu it is based on arch linux so I'll just get out of this and now I'll open my terminal and let's see how much resources this Linux distribution is using. So I'll just write here terminal and here we have XFCE terminal and it also confirms that this Linux distribution is using XFCE as a desktop environment. So I'll just open this one and again I'll use the utility called as top hit enter. At the moment my Manjaro is using around 650 megabyte of my hardware resources. And if we compare it with our Ubuntu, it is using almost half of the resources that Ubuntu was using earlier. It also means that you can install Manjaro on the older hardware as well. So as we have seen the hardware resource usage, if we talk about the hardware requirements for Manjaro, well, you should have two gigabytes of RAM and 30 gigabytes of hard drive space. And in terms of having smoother experience, you should have four gigabytes of RAM available in your system. At the end, I'll talk about the release cycle. Well, as Ubuntu had LTS release cycle, but in Manjaro, we have a rolling release. It means in order to have all the latest things into your Manjaro, you do not need to download the latest version. You just need to 
keep updating your manjaro and you will have the latest of everything and that was all about the manjaro if i were to conclude i would say that if you are a beginner and you are starting to use linux distribution ubuntu must be the one for you because it is easier to use and it is very user friendly on the other hand if you want access to extra packages of arch user repository then go for manjaro it is also easier to use but if we compare it with ubuntu there are a lot of aspect where ubuntu is way ahead than manjaro at the end it's all up to you with which one you want to go and that brings us to the end of today's video i'll see you in the next one till then take care